everyday witches emerge from the shadows of secrecy. Broom closets are flinging open and witches are taking flight. Whether you are hiding in your cozy closet or flying with pride, stay for a spell as witch casting with Theodora Pendragon and her guests share magical moments, stir the cauldron and debunk misinformation and misconceptions about paganism, witches and our wonderful world of magic. Welcome back. Today's special guest, his name is Sean, and he's retired military, and we're going to talk about his journey as a pagan and what he is now doing for the pagan community now that he's retired. Welcome, Sean. Thanks. And thanks for having me. You're welcome. Let's talk about how your spiritual path started as pagan. Well, it was a long and arduous one. <laughs> uh, I grew up kind of around the Baptist church. Uh, never really part of it, never been baptized. So I didn't have any guilt feelings when I did become a pagan. But it wasn't until I think my wife was pregnant uh, with our daughter. That I was like, you know, because I'm, go I'm going to school and I'm learning about all this ancient history. My mind's ex expanding and whatnot. I'm like, you know what? What makes any one of the gods that people worship today, what makes them it? When there were thousands of gods years before they even came on the planet. And I was like, you know, I don't believe in God anymore. I told my wife, and she broke down. She's like, I can't believe you don't believe in God. So I was searching, like agnostic for the most part, I suppose. One day, I just, I was in a secondhand shop. I found a book, and I looked at the title of the book, and I was like, you got to be kidding. This doesn't exist. It was Drawing Down the Moon by Margot Adler, and that was my introduction to paganism and Wicca and witchcraft and Discordianism and everything-ism. And I read the book cover to cover in like a week, and I was kind of shook. <laughs> so I was like, this, these people get it. They get it. I get it. This sounds, this feels, this is really cool. So I started doing more research on it. Uh, never, didn't find another book for probably a couple more years, because this was in the early 90s when I found that book. But they had that inner, that thing there uh, that was pretty new that I used. Uh, the was it the internet? In internet? Yeah. I would search stuff on the internet all the time, and I just read and went to a couple little pagan witchy shops and stuff like that. And I was really getting into it, but I didn't want to commit to it yet. It took me a while to commit, and probably about two or three years later, I did a self dedication ritual in my living room. I had the day off. That was a really big step because you, when you take on another religion, it's and you make these promises to yourself, but at the same time, you're also making these promises to a god and a goddess. I felt awake right then when I did that. Uh, I could feel the energy. I gave a damn about things, you know, and I, I never hid my paganism from anybody. Uh, I've had to defend it a few times, but no, nothing really in the military. Because I was also the, one of the equal opportunity people in the military. So if there's uh, anything from racism to any, all the isms, sexism, uh, religiousism or whatever, I mean, I was there to defend all that stuff too. What years did you serve? 1988 to 2008. 20 years. And what year was it that you did the self-dedication ritual? Uh, I have a notebook, my original BOS. Might have been 98. So this was the midpoint of your military career. Yeah. And you were open about being pagan. Very open. Not so much. I mean, I didn't walk around with a big old pentacle around my neck or anything like that. You know, I kept that, kept it fairly hidden. But, you know, if somebody asked me about it, yeah, I'll tell you. You know, I'm just a regular guy just happens to worship uh, male and female aspects of deity. And that shook a few people. I had a conversation yesterday. With somebody who's like, oh, I didn't know you're Wiccan. And we had a 10-minute conversation about it. <laughs> was it a positive conversation? Yeah, it was It was positive. Because people know me. I don't know if people uh, just assume that because I'm a white, bald male that I'm Christian. 
but the background on my computer at work and here is a big fiery Kernunos, you know, sitting there. So I don't see what they're. <laughs> so everybody knows. Well, I thought everybody did. You said that you shook some people. Would you like to share any of those stories? My sister, my mom. My mom still prays for me. My sister and I have had deep discussions. And when we lived in uh, Kansas, this was around the time I, was, I taught a class to in my friend's college class also. And uh, when we moved there, you know, I was still fairly within within two years of me becoming Wiccan. So I'm, I'm learning. I had a small bookshelf and everything. And I had a room probably about, as, about this size. But I painted a big blue circle on the floor, I had an altar in the corner. I had, you know, all the gizmos and knickknacks that a lot of newbies collect. And I was feeling witchy, you know, witchy as hell. I loved it. My sister came to visit. She brought a friend of hers. My sister is a Bible thumping Christian. And her friend has never even seen Harry Potter. <laughs> so, they, you know, I'm down in my, my room. It's down in the basement, little computer room, really. And her friend sees this blue circle on the floor and freaks the hell out. She's like, oh, oh. I was like, whoa, it's cool. She wouldn't even come in the room, dude. So (laughs) for like two hours. So she wasn't even scared away by a a pentagram. No, no, she wasn't. She saw a blue circle and knew that I was Wiccan. And she was like, I thought it was hilarious. And I had a little plaque on the wall of uh, a horned god. And she was like, but that's, he's got horns. Is that that's the devil? Oh, bless your heart. Uh, no, it's not the devil. Does she think that bulls, male deer, are Satan because they have horns? <laughs> I don't know. I hope not. Because she's a country girl. So, <laughs> do you still have issues with your mom and your sister? Not issues, really. But we talk about it every now and then. My mom is well aware of what I am, who I am, and what I do. This past Christmas season, Yule season. Uh, I was teaching a class over at Lackland, and my parents came to the show. They came to the class. And I, we had about 300 people there that day in attendance. Tell us about Lackland and what you do there. Lackland is a unique thing. It's, uh, it's where they have all the Air Force go there for basic training. They go there for their uh, individual technical uh, classes as well after basic training. But they're afforded the the opportunity, it's, which is their you know their right, to attend religious services of whatever religion they choose. And there are a lot of them. There are a lot of religious services that they host. I host the Wiccan service. Uh, last week, I think we had 380 people come in, and that was our uh, Ostara ritual. So I have about, let's see, one, two, five instructors working with me, and they're all very different levels of knowledge of Wicca, very different um, experience and time, I think I I may be the the elder, maybe just because I'm an old fart. I, I don't know, but you said that you brought your parents. You invited them. Yeah, invited them. They enjoyed it. Was that their first experience with a Wiccan ritual? It was. I don't think we did ritual when I was. I can't remember if I did a ritual or not because sometimes I'll like I'll knock one really quick together just to give the audience uh, an idea of what a Wiccan, Wiccan ritual can be like. And it's bare bones, man. There's no, no flowery words. It's, um, it's get them in, get them out, and let's get on with our life. Let's build some energy. You guys want to graduate? Let's build some energy. So mode it be. They're like, so mode it be. Let's get it done. You know, I, I did the, uh, the last ritual I did was the Embolt ritual. We were in and out, cakes and juice, 45 minutes, 300 people. <laughs> So your parents are Baptist. Uh, my mom's kind of Baptist. My dad's Methodist. Do they give you any feedback after the open circle? Or was it an open circle or were you teaching? Uh, it's kind of both. Uh, we call it an open circle because anybody can come in. If you have access to base, I don't mind if you come in. But they do have to be, people have to be separated from the basic training students because they're you know, still kind of locked in due to discipline issues and things like that. But yeah, they, they enjoyed it. They My dad... He's the only one that didn't give me any crap about being a witch. I think it's because of his experiences in the military. He retired after 30-something years in the military, and he was a first sergeant, which means he's in charge of a lot of folks. So he's like, I don't care. Was it similar to? I said, like, this is way back in the day. He says, anything like Native American stuff? I said, 
there's some similarities. He goes, cool. And that, that's the last I heard of it. That was 25 years ago. And what about your mom? I hear about it every two or three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> what does she say? When I die and go to heaven, I want you to come to heaven too. I said, we could talk over the fence or something. Maybe. <laughs> Because our paradise and her paradise is different. She can't see it any other way but hers. Yeah. But that's okay. I love her. She's good people. Yeah. How is your sister now as far as your choice? And We actually, we rarely talk about religion because she is, she gets a little belligerent about it sometimes because she uses uh, biblical logic on me, whereas I don't recognize the Bible as fact. And she does. It's a good book. I mean, I've read it. It's got some good history to it. It's got some good lessons. Um, And anybody from any religion can use it for their life if they want. I don't. She and I have had that. We haven't had a talk about it in many years. But uh, she and my daughter got into probably a two or three hour conversation one time, too. And my daughter's a atheist. My wife grew up Catholic, and our daughter was christened Catholic. Grew up in a pagan Catholic household. But since I've been teaching, my wife is more leaning towards my spectrum of belief, and, and that's fine. She can she can continue to do that. She can do Catholic things if she. I've been to Catholic mass many times in support of her, and she comes to circle every weekend with me. Well, when I'm teaching anyway, it's kind of a blend. It, it, it all works out. So you have a mutual respect for one another, that you're on a different path and you're very compatible and accepting. Yeah, we've been married for 32 years. That's the only way to do it. And next month we have to attend a Catholic wedding. <laughs> Other than your family, did you shake up anybody else? Maybe people that you served with on active duty? Can't say as I have. No, it Shook some family members, that's about it. But for the most part, nobody knows I'm wicked until I tell them. Because the only piece of jewelry that I wear that has a pentacle on it also has five other religious symbols on it as well. So it, it's a, it's a crapshoot. They can figure it out for themselves. Because it doesn't matter, really, what my belief is. It doesn't matter what anybody else's belief is because it's your own personal belief. But if they have questions about it and they said, wow, how do you know so much about this? Well, I've been practicing since, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and a <it's> surprise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you have Wicca put on your dog tags? I sure did. Once I would, knew you could do that. That wasn't until probably 2000 or so. I also have no religious preference. Had that on there for the longest time. And when I first came in, I had Baptist because I didn't know any better. I didn't know you could choose something else. And, you know, I think a lot of people think that way. They join the military in whatever religion their parents told them that they are. They put that on their dog tags because when I joined the military, I I put Catholic on there because I went through all the sacraments of being a Catholic, but I didn't believe in the Catholic faith at all. I was already going off on the alternative path, so to speak, by the time I had joined. But I thought, oh, I guess this is an official thing, so I just put Catholic on the dog tags. Yeah. That's what, that's what I'm sure a lot of people do that. And I also served during a time before Wicca was recognized as a religion. Yeah. It was it was still fairly new to me in the late 90s. This is when like Senator Bob Barr is talking about stuff and about Wicca and things like that. So we're not going to have witches in the military, things like that. Do you remember that? Yeah. I still have the printouts, man. That's like my early study, my formative period as a Wiccan. I kept all that crap. I have stacks of things that I've kept. In case the listeners don't know who Bob Barr is and what he said, can you tell the listeners a little bit about that history? <sighs> I knew you were going to do that as soon as I mentioned it. That's why I printed it out so I wouldn't have to remember it. <laughs> That's okay. We don't have to talk about it. But he didn't want witches in the military. <laughs> yeah, he did not. Yeah, he did not want, he didn't think witchcraft was a religion. Technically, witchcraft isn't, but Wicca is the name of the religion. But, you know, not all witches are Wiccan, not all Wiccan, all Wiccans are witches. Um, I think he was from a representative from Georgia, and he made this big hullabaloo. And I forget what started it, because there were actually things on TV, like there was a TV show called Picket Fences. And there was a woman on there who I think was getting a divorce and she was Wiccan and the husband wanted custody of the child because of that. And that, I think that was an, have, that's actually been some uh, court cases 
involving things like that, which is why a lot of people have always uh, kept their religion to themselves. Um, Bob Barr said things like that. President Bush may have said something as well. I'm not sure, but it didn't matter. We got our rights and we won. <laughs> yeah, we got our rights now. And we got pentacles on the stones now. Uh. Yes, we do. Do you remember when that happened? 98, maybe? 2007. 2007? Oh, wow, really? Yeah, but it was a 10-year process, so it, it took a long time. Oh, wow. Let's talk about what you do at Lackland. Can you give us an idea of a typical open circle at Lackland or Air Force Base? Typical circle consists of two parts um, because most other religions have religious education and and worship. I don't know what you would call what Wiccans do worship. So what we do is we do the education aspect and we show sometimes we'll do ritual. Like the first hour of the class will be just basic education. And we do this all the time. So we get new people every single time. Every And basic training is only about, what, eight weeks long or something like that. Sometimes we'll get people that will go their entire eight weeks and we have a totally new crew every eight weeks. So the religious ed- education portion is pretty standard. You know, we believe in, you know, we, all the we believes and we do's and all that stuff. Um, we throw in meditations and they love the meditations because they never get a chance to relax in basic training. So they come to wicked class and they're, they can breathe, you know, and I make them breathe in and breathe out, close your eyes, get relaxed. And today, like to, tomorrow, we're going to do um, a spirit animal meditation. They love that because it's, it's new, something they don't, may not know about themselves. We do uh, basic grounding meditations, things like that. And occasionally we'll do like a quick circle just to show them what we do. But most of it's going to be education and Q&A, a lot of Q&A. And I've been asked the same question so many times. Oh, what's that, what's that stuff on your altar? Okay, every altar has, you know, earth, air, fire, water, spirit, etc. And I'll get that question probably three times tomorrow. <laughs> back to back. Your typical trainee, is that the person who is interested in knowing about Wicca? Or is it the person who just wants to get out of cleaning the barracks? Yes. <laughs> that, does that mean yes and yes? Yes and yes. Um, a lot of times it's going to be somebody who's, who's curious. They'll, they'll probably show up for one class. They might show up for all classes. A lot of times because they have to be in, uh, they have to have a buddy with them, their wingman at all times. So there's always going to be two uh, trainees together at the same time. And a lot of times they'll switch. Like uh, the Mormon kid comes to the pagan circle because he got dragged there with the, by his wingman. And the next week the pagan kid will be dragged to the Mormon service or the Buddhist service or the Ekankar or Islam or whatever service is available. So there's a lot of uh, switcheroo, but a lot of them do come back because we're not so – we we have humor in our, in our service, Lisa. A couple of us do anyways. And just because you got to have some humor in it. People make mistakes in ritual. Uh, we did a ritual three weeks ago that it was uh, it was a memorial ritual for one of our brothers who passed away from cancer. And he led the circle for practically 10 years. Somebody else took it over after him. And I took it over at last Maybon. He just died a couple weeks ago. When he was in charge, it was just me and him. We would switch off week and week. So we couldn't really get anything done in our personal lives. So he and I became pretty close when it came to things like that. So we did our ritual, and part of the ritual was to open a gate in the circle to allow the recently deceased in. So, you know, break out my athame and make the the gate, which I always thought was a silly thing to do in ritual, to cut a gate in a circle with a knife. I just Reincarnation's easy. Cutting a gate is silly to me. Just deal with the consequences, but... That's what the ritual called for, so I did it. When we finished the ritual, we're about to start out Cakes and Ale, and I'm describing things to the audience. I'm like, oh, crap, I forgot to close the door. <laughs> did they all laugh? I tear ass over there. Yeah, they did. And all the, because we didn't have any of the basic training students in the circle. They were there just to watch, but just us cadre or instructors were in the ritual. 
And everybody started laughing. And I was laughing too. I said, crap, because I didn't see it in. I may have deleted it when I printed this thing out. And I closed the door. All right. Now he's gone. Everybody's gone. We're good. It's just one of those things that, you know, people people forget to do all the time. You know, robes catch on fire all the time and things are spilled. Candle wax in the carpet. Pagan shenanigans. How many trainees usually attend? I have that stat right here. So for the month of March so far, we've had uh, just under a thousand people this month. It's about, um, we've been averaging this month around 300 and some odd people. Uh, for Feb- for February, we had 1,200 people. January, we had 1,500, 1,582. In October, we had 2,660 people show up for the month. That's impressive. Yeah. I remember when I first started teaching at the circle, um, I was just uh, one of the guys in the lineup. We would be good with 50. But now we had this big auditorium, and one time we filled it. I mean, there was all, it wasn't standing room only, but it was close, man. And they just want to get a break. Do you know if other basic training installations offer this? I do not know. Um, Since this is the Air Force's only basic training spot, uh, I know this one. But as far as Army basic training, I'm not sure. They, They may not. And if it is, I doubt it's to the size that it is here. I'd like to find that out. I'll look into that. How long have you been out at Lackland Air Force Base? I moved here in 2006. I was active duty. The uh, chapel, like we have a really big chapel that's shaped like a pyramid, like a shaped like a temple. It's a beautiful thing. But our house was like right next to it. And uh, I was looking in the base paper. Wicca sir, Wicca sir. What? So they had a... There was a Wicca circle, an open circle for active duty members that's, you know, separate from the basic training stuff. And I went in there and that's how I was introduced to the Sacred Well Congregation. They were sitting in there and they were doing a, they were doing a Mabon ritual. Tell us about Sacred Well Congregation and your introduction to Sacred Well Congregation in San Antonio or Lackland Air Force Base. Well, Sacred Well Congregation is a sponsoring entity for the circle that I'm in charge of. And I went through their online training program and got my deaconry certificate back in the day and uh, then promoted to a uh, cleric priest, which is, I believe it's a title I have now, if people want to look at that. But uh, they're originally out of uh, Netherlands and Texas. So it's an international Wiccan community. It's a base style of Greencraft Wicca, which I believe is, I want to say it's a f- offshoot of Alexandrian Wicca. It was another one. It was uh, also a form of, I think, Elvish Wicca. And they kind of combined to Greencraft. And there's a, they had an altar coin. It's got some, some Elvish written on there as well with the any harm none do as you will on the coin. So a few years ago, we, they had a, uh, a retreat. So it was at a big campsite and everything. And people got together for a little, just like a pagan festival. But it was, uh, it, was, it was a campsite. We went and we learned from some of our elders. Uh, there was a fella from the Netherlands named Agroicha. I don't know what his mundane name is. But Judy Harrow was there. And she was a hoot. And who was she? She's an author. She was a she's a clinical psychologist, and she's written uh, books about or, or Wiccan counseling, or pagan counseling. I took a I got a counseling degree myself a few years ago, and it didn't really match up with me, so, so I didn't do it. Went to school and everything. Got the degree. Says I don't want to do this, but uh, her her book, you know, kind of uh, led me towards doing that, and I was like, no. Nah. Secular counseling is not for me. I, I could probably do parishional counseling or something like that, but no, secular counseling is not for me. So you met her at this retreat? I met her at this retreat. I didn't realize who she was at the time. I didn't realize she was the lady whose uh, work that I've been reading until like the last day. Like, oh, Judy. Wait, Judy Harrow? Yeah, that's her. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even get to shake her hand. So you didn't even know she was famous? No, no. But she was a hoot. I'll give you that. She had a mouth on her. <laughs> <laughs> if she was on here, we'd have to bleep her out, right? One of those? Probably. Probably. Colorful language. People like that are fun. I try. You know, it's difficult because I, I pepper my language pretty hard, pretty spicy sometimes. Um, 
20 years of military, being in the military family, growing up as a kid, you're going to do that. Um, it's really hard not to cuss when you're teaching 319 year olds. <laughs> That's about all the time that we have. And I thank you so much for sharing your colorful journey. And I thank you for all you do at Blackland Air Force Base. It's much needed. Thank you for joining us for Witch Casting with Theodora Pendragon. Have a burning question or have a topic you'd love Theodora and her guests to discuss on the show? Contact her through Instagram at Theodora Pendragon. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And help us spread the word by leaving us a rating and review and sharing it with your friends. See you next time and may your magic always shine. <laughs> <laughs>